Richard Krause. Nick, how are you? Hey, very well, Richard. How are you? Good, thanks. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got to tell you, I saw it about a month ago now, and it's really stayed with me, man. I I, uh, I thought that the monsters were amazing. I thought the setting was incredible. I thought it was a just a breath of fresh air. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah, I think this is testament to you know Joe Cornish's script and uh, and the fact that you know between uh, Joe and the one of the casting directors, um, you know, they found a great great group of kids and uh, I think Joe really brought the best out of them. Well, I know you and Joe were friends, but how exactly did you become involved in the project? Uh, yeah, well, I've known Joe for as long as I've known Edgar, really, and, uh, you know, I was a fan of his. He's uh, part of a double act over here called Adam and Joe, and they're tremendously popular and successful, uh, so I was always a fan of his stuff, and, you know, we became friends over the years. And then uh, Joe brought his film and the script for his film to Big Talk, who is the company that um, Simon and Edgar and I and Naira Park, who um, produces all of our films, uh, you know, she is the boss of. So we, we kind of, I was aware of it through Big Talk. And then uh, Naira and Joe approached me to say that they he had written a part for me in this film. Um, and... I just bit his hand off at the chance. I loved the script and I loved what he'd written for me. And he said, you can kind of improvise and, and do what you want. And, you know, I think um, it's always a real treat as an actor to have someone specifically write a character for you. You know, I think it's, it's, it's very flattering. And so, yeah, I was, I was in. Well, I kind of thought that this character sort of reminded me of Fagin. A little bit, almost. You know, you've got this this one character, this one uh, uh, guy who's who's leading people, I guess, in the wrong direction in some ways. But he seems to have genuine affection for the people around him. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would absolutely. Yeah, we we kind of talked him being a cross between uh, 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 between Fagin and Bruce Dern in Silent Running. You know, <laughs> he, he's kind of a, a horticulturalist, and I'm not sure Ron uh, understands. The, uh, you know the the gravity of in fact what he is doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. Well, he's a, he's a, he's an interesting character. I the the thing about the film is it's a very British, London based film. How do you think that North American audiences will respond to it? Uh, well, well, I don't know. We're going to find out pretty soon. You know, I think. Um, you know, I've heard, I've kind of heard this uh, banded around that they were going to subtitle it and stuff like that. But I think it kind of, you know, the American cinema going public are, uh, you know, they're a smart, savvy bunch. And people will either not see it because it's British. And those people are probably the same people who wouldn't have gone to see Run, Lola, Run or Amelie. Or they will go and see it because they they enjoy cinema, you know. Um I don't think it matters that it's that it's not in American. I think people people are clever enough to, you know. I mean, I can't, I'm just I was trying to think about the the TV show The Wire. You know, right. I'm sure there are people in in Toronto or Winnipeg or you know down in Texas who have to watch The Wire with the subtitles on as well. You know. Right, right, right. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's. I think once you, uh, you, you know what people are talking about, and you, you know, I think that's part of the fun of watching a film. Certainly for me, when I was a child, most of the films that I watched were American, you know, and you didn't necessarily get the cultural specifics that everyone was talking about, but you made an effort and you worked to kind of work out what they were saying, and and that that certainly for me as a young cinema goer gave me a real buzz that I could understand what they were saying and I knew what they were talking about. It kind of felt like I, I could speak a different language, you know, and I think people will feel the same about, about Attack the Block and, you know, they'll go away from the cinema understanding a little bit more about about South London street culture, you know. Right, and I think that once the monsters come on, it doesn't matter about the actors Absolutely. or any of that stuff. A monster is a monster in anyone's language. Yeah, and there's such... Unless it's a weird Japanese ghost monster, and then that's, you know, that's just a weird Japanese ghost monster. <laughs> well, it, there, there's such great sort of uh, thrills and chills here. Now, the, the, the monsters, to me, um, 
they weren't, I don't think there, there's very little computer animated stuff in this movie from what I could tell. So what were the monsters? Or can you tell me, were they people dressed up in suits or uh, what exactly were they? Um, I don't think there was any CG, really. I think that's kind of one of the beauties of having a, a fairly low-budget picture is, you know, you, you, you can't perhaps use as much CG as people like to use. Um, and that, well, I'm just trying to think, if, should I give it away? It... it I mean, it was people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I, I want to, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it. So, but I just the, the mouths and the whole thing is just—it's an image that'll stay with you, like the first time you know that you saw the woman coming out of the TV in the ring, like oh the yeah, time that you know it, all these sort of iconic images uh, from horror films that we've seen uh, over the last you know twenty, thirty years. Uh, I think these monsters will stay with you. Yeah, good. I think that's. I think Joe would be very, very pleased to hear that. It's uh, one of the one of the monsters uh, is a, uh, a guy that we met um, a few years ago when we were working on Tintin. A guy called Terry Notary, who uh, who was our movement coach, Simon Pegg and I's movement coach on Tintin, and Joe met him there, and so uh, Joe got him over to London to uh, to you know to to be the movement, to be the monster. And uh, I think Terry has now worked on Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I think he's one of the main apes in that. So he he is a genius when it comes to movement and the movement of animals and creatures. So, yeah, I think he really helped it too. Absolutely. Now, we're making it sound like it's just... Uh, a, a full-on sort of space invasion horror film, which in some ways it is, but I think it also has a lot to say um, politically as well. I think it's also um, a comment on uh, the, the the sort of um, council estate, uh, the state of council estates in London, um, and about how people live in them. Do you do you see it as a political film at all? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I didn't. It didn't feel like that when I was making it, you know. Uh, I think, if anything, it's a kind of... Uh, I think it kind of tells us to avoid demonising youth just because we don't understand it. Um, I think people, uh, naturally so, will will look at the themes of Attack the Block and and, and politicise it, and I, I guess that's that's for them and... That's for them to thrash out, but it didn't feel like that when we were making it. Right, right. Now, I went on Facebook and Twitter. We were almost out of time. I went on Facebook and Twitter uh, just before we uh, did this interview and said, any questions for Nick Frost? And I was kind of inundated with stuff. Uh, but someone here, uh, Case Do Angel, J-A-S, uh, has asked me to ask you about the new movie Snow White and the Huntsman, which you've just been cast in. Can you tell us anything about that? Um, I don't think I should. It's not my gig. It's uh, I'm very pleased that I they've cast me. I'm going to be one of the dwarfs, and it's quite nice to be able to do a film that you're just acting in for once. Uh, that kind of pressures off a little bit in a way, which is fantastic. Um, but I've seen um, a lot of the storyboards, and I've seen a lot of the costumes and the costume concepts, and um, I think it's going to be great. You know, I think they're going to make it really dark and creepy and. Uh, and very gothic. Well, uh, I can't wait to see that. Attack the Block is fantastic. Uh, another quick question here. Someone says, will you marry me? But, you know, that, <laughs> that's another request from Facebook. <laughs> uh, well, look, let's see how it goes. I mean, I'm married at, the, uh, at this point, but you never say never. <laughs> Nick, thanks so much. No worries. Have a good day. I will. You too. Bye now. Richard Krause.